Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes to us from Alan, and he is KB1DJ. The question is very, very simple. I can give you some very simple answers, and then we'll, we'll just go into them just a little bit, see what we can learn. Do 2 meters slash 440, well, it's actually 2 meters 70 centimeter, dual band uh, mobile antennas need to be grounded? The answer is generally not. Remember, the primary purpose for grounding is lightning protection. Another reason for grounding is in some circumstances, it can help reduce noise that comes into your shack. The way these antennas normally work, they've got a magnet for a base, and then the antenna sticks up and you just put that magnet down. Let me take a moment here and encourage you to clean that spot really well before you put the magnet down. Otherwise, the vibration will just grind that grit right into that circle. So do that um, and then put that thing on. And what it does is it's not going with a ground per se, but it's using the car chassis through capacitive coupling to be a counterpoise for the antenna. Now, the best definition that I've heard of for counterpoise is also probably the worst. A counterpoise gives an antenna something to work against. Okay, if you're trying to, you're in outer space and you've got to push something away from you and it's heavy, well, the problem is you push against it, it moves you. <laughs> Okay, so you need something to hold on to to push, something to work against to push. And it's the same way with an antenna and a counterpoise. Counterpoises generally act rather capacitively anyway. Uh, in fact, if you look up the definition of, count of uh, counterpoise in the dictionary, it'll talk about radials. And those two are a counterpoise rather than a traditional ground. Ground is ground. It's the ground beneath us, which is a pretty lousy conductor, but nonetheless a very important one. So that's why we put wire radials in. Okay, now, also does the ATAS-120A need to be grounded? The ATAS-120A is an HF slash VHF slash UHF antenna for use in a mobile environment, in other words, on your car. Again, the same thing. In fact, it asks that when you put the mounting point in, usually on a door, it's mounted on a door and it goes in and out like that, that you actually take the paint away so it can get right to the frame of the car. This runs into other problems because in modern cars, lots of things are plastic, uh, and that doesn't conduct electricity. Uh, so I did a, a video of Lou French showing his mobile system to me, and he had an ATAS antenna on it. And what he has done between the door frame and the truck frame is he took a, a little piece of grounding strap and he ended up going all around the truck and completely grounding all the parts to each other so that you had one counterpoise for that thing to work against. And his ATAS 120A worked very well. Now you say, well, what about grounding for lightning? Well, uh, if you're in your car when a lightning strikes, and it does happen, but not very often, could you have some damage? Well, I would not operate under these situations. I'd go ahead and disconnect the antennas, try and keep the opportunity for damage at a minimum. Uh, but the point is, the true lightning ground is more important in a permanent installation where you actually have access to ground rods. Now, here's a somewhat different question. I use standard 3 8 to PL259 stud connectors for all my mobile antennas, and the washers seem to rust quickly. Is that critical? Yes, of course. A washer that's rusting, rust is not a good conductor of electricity. And you're also losing mechanical integrity, and the corrosion can spread. Cars are painted for the reason that they tend to corrode in the atmosphere, especially if it's salty or wet or something like that. That's why we paint cars. What you want to get is a different material for those washers. 
I would suggest stainless steel. If you get the standard aluminum washers that you get down at Home Depot or whatever, the aluminum oxide forms and you've got a problem with dissimilar metals touching each other, steel and aluminum touching each other, is just an instant invitation for corrosion. I was on a Navy ship one time that had a, a steel hull and an aluminum superstructure. And I asked one of this high-ranking en enlisted man, I said, what gives? I mean, those two are going to corrode. And he says, well, they claim they put the right stuff between them so it wouldn't corrode. And I'm looking down at it. I go, that's not corrosion, huh? <laughs> and it was just corroding like crazy. So they were always having to get after it. So if you put dissimilar metals together, steel, and uh, you can get steel washers, but you don't know if it's the same steel. I'd go for stainless steel. Now, stainless steel is not 100% stainless, but it is a very, very good step in the right direction. Also, for the nuts, if the nuts are connected to or hit the chassis, you've got steel on whatever those nuts are made out of, often aluminum. If you go with the steel, uh, especially stainless steel, there's a something that you put on the nuts to keep them from galling. Galling is when steel is fastened to steel and it's tight enough, it'll actually sort of connect a little bit and they can be extremely difficult to get off. Think about your corrosion. Now the way corrosion works, metals are put on a scale and two very similar metals, very similar to each other, what they do is there will be some very, very slight corrosion, but not much. But if you take a metal that's way down at this end and put it with a metal over here, you can really have issues always, almost automatically. And aluminum to copper is not a good idea. Aluminum to steel is not a good idea. Of course, copper to steel is not a good idea. You want to keep them separated. Now, there are ways of doing that. There are little washers that are plastic and they're flat but they've got a little skirt at the bottom that will go into another washer so when you put the bolt down through it the bolt is physically kept away from the material that it's going through so that way with no contact you avoid the problem of corrosion okay corrosion on an automobile is not a good thing on a ship is certainly not a good thing and on an aircraft is inexcusable because you can get those things coming apart in flight. The problem with malfunctioning aircraft is you can't just pull to the side of the road. And as a pilot, I had that <laughs> thought beat into me. Okay, so Alan, we went into a lot of detail on that because I wanted to cover corrosion where that comes from, how it comes from, and just think dissimilar metals. You've got multiple kinds of metals. The way to solve that is to make everything the one kind of metal. Now, can you put a coating over that? Is there some kind of a coating? Oh yeah, go to an auto parts store and they've got a million different tubes of stuff you can kind of spread over it to keep it from corroding from the air, from sea spray, salt spray, or whatever. Okay, now in a lot of states in the winter, the thing that really cuts through ice is plain old fashioned sodium chloride or table salt. It's also sea salt. That's really nifty. Our tires can hit asphalt, but it's a great way to start a lot of corrosion. Uh, salt, as in salt water, is extremely corrosive. So you let that sitting around with steel with a, that doesn't have paint on it, and you've got a real problem, okay? Now, if you come up with stuff that is galvanized, it has a thin sheet of zinc that's plated on it. The zinc is yet another metal we can introduce here. Now, the fact that it's plated on it means that you have a bond with no air gap, a water gap, or anything like that, and those work fine. But in this case, I'd go with stainless steel. So there you have it. I hope that's been helpful. Uh, for those who've watched this far, I think you must like the channel. If you do, please click subscribe and like and leave a comment. And if you'd like to help the channel keep going, go to patreon.com ke0og. And until we next meet, 73.